Okay, so maybe the algorithm is serving you up some van life renovations, or maybe you're just really curious about what RV living and RV travel looks like in real life. So hi, my name is Katie. I work for RV Share, and today I'm going to take you through our top three pros and cons of RV travel. Just like anything in life, there's going to be positive and negative things, and you have to weigh, you know, what works best for your vacations and what you are looking for out of this type of adventure. So along the way, I will drop some tips bits on how and where to get started and as always make sure that you like and subscribe to our channel if you want some more tips and tricks on RV rental travel. Alright let's go! So starting with the pros, our number one reason why we love RVing so much is that RVing gives you the ability to be up close and personal to your favorite places and to some things that you might not have even thought about before. So have you ever wanted to call a national park home for a couple of nights? or have you ever wanted to be at your favorite event or your favorite amusement park? Well, you can do that all with RVing. And you know, there's so many things that you can do with RVing. It's very, very flexible. For instance, they even have city parks. So if you wanna go visit a major metro area and you wanna live downtown for a couple days but you don't wanna pay out the nose, well, there's RV city parks that you can stay at. Um, so you get all the benefits of being downtown but without paying like the astronomical city rates. You can also get beachside property with an RV, which is amazing. And depending on where you are, you might be able to even camp on the beach. So there's really no limit to what you can do when you rent an RV. It's really up to your imagination and where you want to go. Okay, so pro number two, you can really disconnect when you are RVing. And I don't just mean, you know, you're out and there's no Wi-Fi. Uh, it's a little bit harder to explain unless you experience it yourself. So you might have to take our word for it until you do. But RVing just feels very different. Even if you are not away from Wi-Fi, you are away from your day-to-day -day routines and you are trying something very new, which really kind of breaks your mental space from being connected uh, to your everyday stressors. So it really sets you up for being more relaxed and you're able to unwind a bit faster than you could potentially on a regular kind of vacation. The potential lack of regularity and pattern when you RV really helps you get out of your comfort zone and really push the boundaries of what you're comfortable with. You could potentially be in new predicaments, in new towns, meeting new people, experiencing new adventures and new cultures, and it really will help you grow as an individual and build into this really great RVing community that's out there. So pro number three, RV rentals are pretty affordable. It is no secret that raising a family is very expensive and family vacations can be just as strenuous on the wallet when you start to consider things like individual flights and hotels and meals out and car rentals it can start to add up really really quickly. We know that an average long weekend with an RV rental including the rental fuel costs, campsites, and groceries averages to about $800, which is half the cost of plane travel, hotel travel, and getting a car rental. So big cost savings there. And campsites are much less expensive than hotel rooms, and depending on the campsite, you might even be able to camp for free. And just like at home, being able to cook on your RV is such a big cost saver, not having to go out to dinner every single night. You really can save a lot of money that way. And additionally, RVing makes it super easy to bring your pets along with you. So that way you're saving money on boarding or having a sitter come to take care of your animal while you're away. You can just bring your pet along for the ride with you. Most owners charge some sort of cleaning fee for the dog but it is a lot less expensive than actually boarding and getting that sitter. Okay so those were our top pros for RV rentals. We think that there's a lot more pros but those are our top three. Now we're gonna jump over to our cons which I have a feeling some of you might be more interested in knowing. Okay so con number one, the learning curve. One of the toughest things about RVing is knowing where and how to get started. And that makes sense because RVs are not your typical housing rental, yet they're also not your typical vehicle. They're kind of this odd combination of the two, which means that there's gonna be new vocabulary that you need to learn and new maintenance that you also have to take care of as well. Not to mention all the different types of RV vehicles that are out there to choose from. Okay, so we know that this process can be overwhelming, so we have put together other content that we recommend that you watch 
This one is what every first time renter should know. This one is going to break down all the fundamental terms and how to be successful with your first rental. And then once you watch that, we also recommend that you watch this one here. And this one is how to pick an RV rental class. So this one's going to go over all of the different RV types that are out there and the pros and cons of each of those. So you can determine what is going to be best for your RV rental. Con number two, it is a non-traditional pre-planning process. Now all vacations are going to require some level of pre-planning. Usually we pick the place or the destination and then we pick our accommodation and then we build our itinerary around that. At least that's what I do. I would assume most people do somewhat of a same flow. However, with an RV, it's gonna be a little bit flipped. You're gonna really want to understand who you're gonna be with and what you're gonna do before you can pick your accommodation. And your accommodation in this case is gonna be both the RV itself and where you are going to park it, so your campsite. And depending on where you go, that might also require a little bit more pre-planning than you might think. So for instance, if you want to go to a national park, a lot of those national parks will book out months in advance and some campgrounds within the national parks will also only work on a first come first serve basis. Uh, but don't worry, there's usually a lot of different workarounds for these types of things. Um, a lot of national parks, for instance, will have private campgrounds around them uh, that you can go and bring your RV to, or sometimes they're located next to a national forest in which you can camp at for free in an RV. However, again, you're going to have to think of, oh, hey, that's a different kind of camping than camping at a campground. And then also I'm going to need the right type of RV that can handle maybe more of that rugged style camping. So all things to consider uh, when you're starting to plan. So if you're interested in more information about how to find the perfect campsite for you, we recommend that you check out this video here. But our biggest piece of advice for you is just to remain flexible when you're in this planning process. You know, you might uncover new information or your needs might change and that's okay. We want that to happen. That's normal. That's natural. You just got to go with it. And that's part of the fun of our being. And con number three, additional vehicles. So unless you're really planning on living out that van life dream of yours, or if you intend to really truly stay in one spot for your entire vacation, you're probably going to have to figure out how to get around when you are at your destination. So that requires you to figure out, can my current vehicle tow something safely? How much can it tow? Or am I comfortable being able to tow my own vehicle behind a motorhome? So another piece of information that you're going to have to figure out beforehand. For first time renters or people that are just not comfortable maneuvering somebody else's vehicle, we recommend that you look into getting destination delivery. This is an add-on fee that some owners will provide and what that means is really that you'll pay an extra fee and they will bring the trailer or the motorhome to your end destination for you so that way you can show up in your own car and you can get your vacation started right away. Okay, so now that we've gone over our pros and our cons, let's talk about who we think makes a good RVer. Well, obviously we're biased. We love RVing and we believe that everybody should really give it a whirl one time or another uh, because we are trying very, very hard to make it accessible because it is so fun and such a unique experience. But in all seriousness, we think that RV rentals are great for adventure seekers, people who want to get off the beaten path. We think it's great for families or people who want to travel with their pets, people who obviously love the outdoors, and people who want to be up close and personal to their favorite events. RVs are great for music festivals, tailgating, sporting events, and a lot of these places will actually have campgrounds on site or close by that can accommodate RVs. So really your options are truly endless here. And that's it. Those are our top pros and cons of RV rentals. I hope that you found this video helpful. Again, please like and subscribe to our channel. And if you have any other pros or cons for RVing and RV rentals, make sure you drop them in the comments. We always love to hear what you guys are saying and thinking out there. Again, my name is Katie. I work for RV.